Frank, hold it steady. I'm gonna put the star on the top of the tree. Hold on, let me plug it in first. Whoa! Watch the food, will you, Frank? I got an edge finder alert I wanna look at. I got you. The food, Frank, not the charts. Uh oh. Yeah, sure thing. You didn't leave the keys in the spaceship, did you? Yeah, I did. Why? I think someone just stole it. Oh, gosh. Uh, you know what? Whatever. That was kind of a last month thing, anyways. This holiday season, give yourself the gift you know that you've been wanting. A funded trading account with FX2. FX2 allows you to earn real profits on a simulated account up to $200,000. To start, select any of their one-step evaluations. We know things can get pretty hectic during the holidays, but you can take your time with the evaluations because there's no time limit to complete them. And with FX2, once you pass, they'll even refund your evaluation fee during your first withdrawal. You can collect up to 85% of the profits that you gain on your account. You can buy a whole lot of presents with that kind of money. Get funded with FX2 today and find the most wonderful trades of the year. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to CPI Streams. We do these every month, of course, for every major news event. And this one, in my opinion, is probably the most meaningful piece of information that we're going to get all month long. Hence why we already have almost 400 people watching the stream as we start out here today. I just want to ask if you're enjoying our content, if you've watched some of my videos or some of the A1 Trading Show streams before. Uh, if you have and you support us, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. It does help to get more people in the room as we kick off and get closer to this CPI event. Uh, let me put my uh, put my cards on the table. I am still long the S&P 500. There's uh, if anybody was still wondering, I've been in the street for a long time now, but I am still long S&P going into the news. I have my own biases as you guys all do as well, and I'm going to be walking through. Do me a quick favor as we start, hit the thumbs up button, but also let me know in the comments or in the chat here as we're streaming, what charts would you like me to look at? We have got about 15 minutes before the actual news spike. And let me just lay out a game plan here real quick as you guys type what you'd like me to look at. Let me keep this thing really straightforward, okay? I'm going to pull up the DXY, which by the way, uh, what's going on with the dollar index? The news isn't out and here goes the dollar dropping so far. We'll see what happens there. Okay, so I'm going to try this. Keep, try and keep this real quick. CPI, it can either be hotter than expected, as expected, or cooler than expected, right? If we're talking about DXY and if we're talking about gold and stocks. I did this yesterday, so bear with me if you've seen this. Um, I'm going to put S&P and gold over here, the dollar index, and we're going to say what is likely to happen in each one of these scenarios. So this is our game plan, okay? Just for full understanding, if you're somebody who's newer to fundamentals, I hope this is helpful to you. If you get CPI, and I apologize for the terrible handwriting, it's with a mouse, so cut me some slack there. DXY, if the if CPI is hotter than expected, the dollar is very likely to break out of this potential high, uh, this, this market structure here at 104, okay? So straight up, if we get a hotter than expected number, I think that the dollar rallies, and that probably drags gold and the stock market down for the day. So that's straight up a possibility. We don't know what the news number is going to be. Let me just get something out of the way. A lot of people will jump on these shows and say, Nick, what is CPI going to do? And I would be a fool if I was to stand here and tell you what I think I know CPI is going to do. That would just be absolute nonsense, and I'd be lying to all of you guys. The reality is I don't know what the news is going to be, but what we can do is we can set up game plans and we can trade the aftermath, and that's what we do every CPI, and that's why I love news days. 
So let's keep going with this idea. Stick with me. If CPI, if inflation readings come out as expected, meaning they are cooling in line with expectations, guess what I think happens? Here's, here's my bias. This is where a little bit of opinion comes in. If, if inflation comes out as expected and things are cool uh, in, and inflation is coming down as the market has expected and wants to see, then I think the dollar actually falls and I think it continues its downtrend. And if the uh, inflation cools, then it's probably likely that the gold market and the stock market gold substitutes for uh, for for commodities and S&P substitutes for indices across the board. Uh, not a blanket statement, but pretty close. If you get a CPI that is um, soft or even less uh, than expected, real soft, then this becomes kind of a double whammy where you see a real hard dollar fall and you probably see a real strong rally for these two things. Does this make sense? Does this Is this good? And can I move on? Let me know. Type yes in the chat if that made sense to you here, guys. We are on a time crunch. We've got 10 minutes to go before the news spike. So let me know if that table makes broad sense to you so that we can get into some charts. Uh, by the way, guys, I've got my um, electronic mug here. It keeps your drink warm. Many of you guys probably uh, you know, can imagine as I'm doing these streams, I talk a lot. So my coffee sometimes gets cold. Uh, so what a perfect gift this was. Somebody gave it to me for my birthday. So shout out to them. Appreciate it. All right. So um, yeah, so the, the concept here is I'm looking for most scenarios to be bearish dollar bullish golden stocks. So that's why, again, when I show you my positions, I am long I'm logged into Webull. This is what I trade with as a U.S. trader. I want to trade on a regulated broker. I'm on a big hype about that recently. I've been talking. And by the way, thank you guys for the yeses. I see a lot of affirmatives in the chat. We'll move on here now. Um, I do have, let me just be very quick on the S&P 500. I am long. I am still bullish. I've been long since back here. And again, uh, I'm, I am basically looking to hold this in less price break structure, but today's movement is looking really good so far. We are floating at this point about $34,000 on this position. So it's been a it's been a killer. And uh, not all of my trades look like this, full transparency. I wish they were all like that, but this has been a remarkable one for me. So uh, let's take a little, quick look at gold. Uh, and again, uh, just to, to keep it real brief on each of these things, I'm going to try and move quickly. The gold market broke through support, guys. We saw this upward trajectory going pretty well, and price completely failed out, not just on this trend line, but take a look at what happened here, guys. We're on the daily chart, and I watch very closely what happens on the daily. And what you'll notice here is that this 2000 level, which I used to have as a green level on my chart, I thought we'd get a bounce. No such bounce was found, and we eventually even closed underneath the 2000 mark. Does that mean gold is going to drop much harder today? Well, remember, we don't predict what's going to happen with CPI. That is a foolish game to play, and anybody who thinks that they know exactly what CPI is going to be beforehand, they're probably trying to sell you something you don't need, okay? So we don't predict what CPI is going to be. We react and we trade accordingly. We've already set out our game plan. Again, if you missed that, if you just tuned in, scroll back a little bit in the video where there was a little table that we drew. It looked a little bit like, let's see if I can get there like this table, right? Go back and watch that part of the video if you'd like to watch that again. That's our game plan as we go into this. That's what I'm looking to do. Okay, so we don't sell, we don't buy before the news. That is foolish stuff because we don't know what the spike is going to be. The spike could bring us right back up or it could drop like a rock. We don't know. It's very dependent on what the number be comes out to be. But again, let's go back to our concept here. If inflation is cooling and if it's really cooling, if we get a real soft uh, CPI print, then guess what? We probably recapture this 2000 level and we start to go bullish. However, if CPI comes out hot, we probably break the lows and day traders probably take it lower. So again, that's the game plan. We are going to trade the aftermath, not trying to predict what the spike is going to be. Is everybody on the same page with that? Because I know every single CPI, guys have done this for eight years, and I can tell you every single news event, there's comments. I blew my account trying to guess which way every single time. Do not do that. Don't be that. Are you going to be that next person that's commenting in my comment section? So just, just please don't do that, okay? It's really risky. Um, to try and trade the spike and predict what it's going to do. That is incredibly, incredibly uh, akin to game gambling. Anyways, um, let's take a quick look at EU. Here's the euro dollar finding support off the daily chart. We'll watch this one close here as we go into the event. Again, by the way, six minutes to go. And uh, if you're enjoying the stream, smash that thumbs up button. We got 900 people in here. It would do a lot for the stream if you just took a second to support what we're putting on here. 
got here early to the office. It's a freezing cold day today, so help us out. Smash the thumbs up button for me and the team. Okay, so, all right, so euro dollar, finding support, 1.075. Today's, today is decision day for the euro, I think. As you hit this supportive level, are you going to be able to actually kind of make those gains and hold them, perhaps on a cooler than expected print or as expected print? Both of those scenarios, I think euro dollar has room to expand higher. On the flip side, if you get that hot inflation number, watch for breaks below the lows. Day traders might get a hold of it. If we get below 1.075, I think that's kind of the, the last run here for the euro. So we'll watch to see what that number comes out to be. And we'll come back to euro with a little bit more decisiveness once we have the print. Again, it is a very, very important number. You have to ask yourself, why does it move the market so much? It's because it's important. It matters. The inflation readings are very, very important to fundamentally the picture that it sets for future trends. Still running US 30 position since last FO uh, FOMC. That's awesome. Congratulations on that. For me, I'm all bullish uh, crosses against the US dollar. So your bearish dollar. Speaking of bearish dollar, let's have a look at the DXY. So again, we pointed this out. Here's a daily chart. Price is uh, in a downtrend pretty clearly. It did, in fact, hold this area that we've talked about several, several times. And that's a good start, but again, we can't jump to conclusions here. CPI could completely reverse this and break it back the other direction, or it could solidify our view. And in fact, if CPI comes out cooler than expected and dollar continues to fall, I think you get down in the lower time frames. And in my opinion, I'm looking for setups. So again, as always, none of this is financial advice. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm trading my own money. Do your own thing. Do your own due diligence. Um, like I said, for me, the path of least resistance is to stay long the S&P 500 in my own trading. I've been long on this one since uh, we got a signal on the edge finder last month. Uh, S&P still getting a plus four. That's still a good solid reading, but at one point it was even more bullish. So has since uh, lost a little bit of its entry favor. But again, beautiful chart. We've been trending, uh, trend trading this one for several weeks here uh, and, and not usually something that I hold on to for so long, but we've just been able to trail a stop consistently. And now the question is, are we going to get another pop higher today or is are we going to get some some pullback on this? Um, again, we're floating at this point about $34,000 on this trade. So we will let this one run and see what happens on the S&P as we get closer to the event. Again, four minutes to go. Uh, in terms of signals from the edge finder, let's go ahead and take out everything except for, let's get rid of our neutrals here for a second. So this is our algorithm that sets up setups. When I take trades, this is what I use to find them. So this is taking a look at lots of different things. And by the way, keep an eye on that inflation tab. Inflation readings will be updated at shortly after CPI comes out. That's the way the edge finder pulls data. It pulls the latest data and it factors it into the algorithm. And so we are still bullish overall. Indices, take a look. You've got NAS and, and Dow both bullish, okay? Uh, in terms of bearish setups, looking for a pop on oil today, I might be looking to get on the short side of that one. So we'll watch for that. Uh, the Aussie Kiwi also looking interesting. You've got pound yen bullish overall. Let's take a quick look at GJ. Anyone, anyone trading GJ out there? Let's take a quick look and see what we've got for GJ here. As we go into the event, again, uh, not a big fan right now, to be completely honest, of buying against the yen. The yen seems a little bit like it wants to rally, and uh, it has kind of been doing that. So, you know, here's a quick look at dollar yen for my for my UJ, UJ friends. Again, this chart looks bearish to me, and it has not looked bearish in a long time, but this is a daily chart. When we drop down to the four hour, you can kind of see, again, uh, this, this downtrend starting to, to take precedence over the uptrend that's been. So... To me, I'm going to stay away from UJ. If anything, I would be probably on the bearish side of UJ. But again, I don't see any confirmations from the edge finder, so no trade for me. Okay. Um, by the way, uh, just a heads up, if you do want a copy of the edge finder, we'll drop a link here in the chat. You can get information, pricing options, that sort of thing, if that is something you're interested in. Uh, my company, A1 Trading, we build software tools for traders. And if you would like a copy of what we're using to spot the trades that we're trading on live capital, no nonsense, no, no BS, if you want the tools that we're using. We're going to drop a link. Here it is. Click this link. You can chat with someone on our team and get a copy. It comes with a whole bunch of stuff, including, of course, the COT data, the smart money tracker, which gives us ideas as to what institutional money is buying and selling. If you want that in a simple table format, again, message us. We'll come back to that. We're getting real close to the news here. 
I'll come back to the COT data, which will be really important to take a consideration of as we get closer to the event. Again, we've got one minute to go before CPI comes out, guys. We've got S&P in the bottom right. We've got gold bottom left. We'll put the dollar index top right. And these are 15 minute candles, by the way. So keep a close eye on this. It'll probably move a good bit here. So we've got dollar, gold, S&P. And for the last one, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll put Euro USD. So we've got all the all the big charts here for the most part on the screen. And again, we've got about 30 seconds to go. Uh, do me a quick favor. If you enjoyed that, if that game plan, if the breakdown was helpful to you in any way, shape or form, help me out. It takes two seconds. Hit the thumbs up button on the video. It does support what we're doing here. And again, we are coming in to CPI. Let's get, let's see what we get. Breaking news coming in. All right. In about five seconds to go here, let's see what we get. <clears throat> All right. CPI is out. Dollar index initially popping higher. Gold dropping down to 1986. S&P dropped, then rocked. Euro USD up. Gold up. S&P back up now. Dollar index up. Let's see if we can get a print. And we are waiting on it. Not just quite yet, but again, an initial spike higher on gold, S&P, euro, and there goes the dollar. Dollar is down. Seems like there was an initial delay on in getting the data. I'm still waiting on it for Forex Factory. Uh, so we'll see if anybody has a number. 3.1 as expected. Thank you very much. Okay, 3.1 as expected. Remember what I said, guys. Remember our game plan? What was the game plan? If numbers come out in line with expectations, dollar bearish. S&P gold bullish. Let's see if that holds up. And again, as expected, as expected. Oh, uh, month over month was hotter than expected, but still headline over year over year, as expected. Core, as expected. Okay. We got kind of an as expected reading and the forecast that, not the forecast, but the game plan that we discussed seems to be playing out fine so far. Okay, gold spiked. What did you guys trade? Let me know in the chat. What are you, what are you watching? What are you trading here? Anybody... Um, do me a favor. If you have a trade open, like, uh, like share it in this format. I'm going to show you SPY long. Like this is, this is like my position, right? I'm not saying do this. I'm saying this is, this is like what I'm doing. I have a long position on the S and P. Let me know. What are you guys trading? Are you bullish something? You bearish something chat, uh, GBP long. Thanks Jacob. Yeah. So for example, GBP USD, let's have a quick look at that. And there goes the dollar trading down 103.51. We're seeing so far the game plan is playing out. And this is why, again, I said two, three, two out of three scenarios on bullish S&P. We are staying in on this one. And this, this is, um, give me give me one moment to, to relish in this for a second. I've been trading for a long time. I take a lot of small losses, a lot of small winners, a lot of break-even trades. And I trade all year long, really to find a trade like this. I've got this trade going. It's still going. The S&P 500 has far exceeded where I thought it was going to go. And that's why when it comes to trend following, I don't like to call a top. When you're trend following, in my opinion, the way to go about it is to follow and follow and follow until the market tells you it's time to get out. So let me brag for just a second. This is one of my better trades this year. I've had plenty of terrible trades. I was wrong about gold recently. Like, like I'm not just trying to hype my one winner, um, but this one winner has been something that I've been waiting on and trying to find for a very long time. So I'm glad I finally caught this one. S&P, we're still long. Um, for those of you guys who are in the signals group, we will be updating the S&P 500. I think it's about time we trail a stop further. Um, so I will probably be doing that shortly after stream. Uh, this is a trade that we have. If you've been a member, you've been following along with this since the very beginning. Every trade that we take gets shared inside of our Discord channel. No cap, real accounts, no nonsense, no MetaTrader, no, no, none of that. If you want to trade with us, if you want to come join the VIP, here's how you can get a super big discount. If you message us right now, we've got a link here. My team is on deck. If you would like to uh, get access to the signals, message right here. We got some Christmas discounts coming on. So if you want our Christmas discounts, send us a direct message, come join us. And again, no nonsense. When we take trades, it's on live accounts. It's our own money at stake. I don't really like that a lot of times signal services are just showing you MetaTrader accounts, which could totally just be demos or you know um, funding challenges that were given to them so they don't have any skin in the game. None of that over here. When you see us taking trades, these are our live personal money that we are trading. Um, and of course, you know, it's not a copy service. It's not a, it's not for lazy traders, but if you're looking to join a serious group where real trading is going on, 
come join us. We're uh, we're doing that over here. So yeah, yields coming down, uh, ten year, two year, both coming down here. You like to see that, and definitely good for uh, equities and and risk sentiment for those of us following, you know, the Dow, the uh, the S and P, the Nas. All three of these generally going to be benefited right now from falling yields. We don't want it to fall too far. Heads up, if this yield falls too far, you know what that means? That means the economy's under pressure, and we don't want that. We want yields to, to mildly come down. We don't want them to crash, right? It's an interesting thing, but one thing you should recognize is that the 10-year yield is in some ways a representation of the U.S. economy. We don't want the economy to crash. We just want it to cool off so that stocks don't get hit by another Fed rate hike, right? Makes sense? Let's move on. Let's keep going and talk more setups. Again, like I said, last call, if you do want our Christmas discount, it is a super discounted price. We'll give you a real, real good one if you shoot us a DM on our website. We'll drop that link one more time if you don't mind, Chandler, for those of you guys who would like to join the Discord or get access to the Edge Finder, which I'll show you now. Um, I mentioned COT data. Again, send that message there if you'd like to chat with a rep who can get you access to the Edge Finder or to the... Um, to the Discord group, so check this out. So what we've got here, we've got, um, this is so interesting that ahead of CPI, what was big money doing? Let's let's check the records here. Institutional money was on the latest money flow filing from the COT data, right? US 30, GBP, AUD, Kiwi. They were all piling longs in, in the latest filing. And what do we see happening on the news? Well, there goes US 30. Let's check. There goes the pound. Let's check Aussie, right? There goes, well, the Australian dollars hasn't done too much. Kiwi, let's check. Eh, not too much. Let's keep going though. Let's take a look. What about, uh, what about oil? They've been bearish on oil. Let's take a quick look at oil. You see what I'm saying? It's not. Uh, it's not. It's no perfect predictor. Please don't. Please don't get it twisted. But understanding what smart money flow is doing can be very, very important. Uh, so heads up, if you would like a copy of this, again, we are doing Christmas discounts on the Edge Finder right now. If you want access to our COT data, click right into our link that we dropped there. You get access to that there. Again, in terms of net positioning, let's have a look at that. Gold, USD, Nikkei, Euro. These things are generally speaking more bullish from institutional money. However, you know, a lot of times people will look at this section of the edge finder because this is like the most intuitively obvious. You're like, okay, so they're really long these things and really short these things over here, right? Kind of. Let me break this down. If you're trying to track institutional money, I don't do that by trying to track price action. I don't think, in my personal opinion, I think price action can be very deceiving to try and track smart money or big money. That's just my opinion. Again, if you have something work for you, do you. But here's something that I will add. If you want to actually see what smart money is doing, why not get it from the actual source that has to, by law, they have to share their reportings week by week. That is the COT data. Okay, so if you want to track smart money, Here's how I actually can do it, not as an opinion, not as, oh, I think they might be doing this funny business. Here's the facts. Here's the actual COT data that shows us institutional money, and we can see what they're net long and net short. But more importantly, we can see what they did in the latest filing. This report that we built down here allows us to look at what the latest smart money moves actually were unequivocally, right? We're looking at the commitment of traders data, the COT, the non-commercials data, and we can see where their money went. Did they go into the US 30? Did they go into the pound? Did they go out of oil? Did they go out of Bitcoin? What did they do, right? Week to week. That's what we track here. And again, this report is something that we've built. We're a software team out of Atlanta. Yes, there is a fee. Yes, we do sell things. Yes, we're a company. Uh, but it is a useful tool and traders around the world are using our software and helping us to improve it every day. We take a lot of feedback from users. And um, you know, if you want a copy, like I said, the link is in the chat and uh, you could pick it up there. It's also in the description. If you chat with us, if you send us a direct message on our website, we'll get you a special Christmas discount if you're watching the stream with us live. Okay, so oil's coming down. You've got the dollar coming down, but then back up. Here's euro. Euro popped and then dropped. Pound dollar popped, dropped. Dollar yen. Um, 
not too much there. Euro yen, dollar CAD, dollar CAD, not too much. What's interesting is that the actual move uh, seems to have just spiked and reversed itself. And in some ways, this is uh, this is pretty much again. It was numbers that were expected. My opinion is that, and this is this is my opinion. My opinion is that overall, this kind of just goes back to status quo. Which again, I think the burden is on the dollar bulls and the stock market and gold market bears. I think the burden is there. Why? Because the inflation trend is still intact. And that inflation trend is what is most dominant, in my opinion, right now in the markets. If the Fed is going to make a decision as to whether or not they're going to rate hike or rate cut or rate hold, it is based right now mostly on inflation. Secondary, I would say, is jobs. So when you look at this and you say, well, inflation's coming down like they kind of expected, guess what? In my opinion, path of least resistance is the status quo. Does that make sense? So if I'm looking at the US dollar, the status quo right now, in my opinion, is overall to stay bearish. And we'll see if I'm right about this. I could be completely wrong. When I make these cases, guys, I'm not certain about anything. I think certainty in trading is a quick way to lose a lot of money, right? I am saying I think most likely we see this level hold and we should see price roll over from here, as I've been saying the last few days. It hasn't gone anywhere just yet, but that's kind of roughly speaking where I'm at with the pound USD is, or I'm sorry, with the dollar index. And then when you go look at things like pound USD or euro USD, uh, I'm taking that that bias with me. So if I'm looking at the euro dollar, I'm mostly looking for long setups. If I'm looking at pound USD, I'm mostly looking for long setups, but I also have to cross it against the edge finder to see if there's anything there. So pound USD is the only USD one on the list right now. So let's take a quick look at the pound dollar. The uptrend seems pretty intact, right? You've got a nice upward trend. Price did pull back for a few days, probably, uh, you know, perhaps going to look to find new buyers here. We're finding what seems to be support. And perhaps we're getting another pullback here before it pushes. Now, this is, of course, as always, when I share ideas, these are my opinions. I could be completely wrong about this, but I think the path of least resistance for the pound is, is higher, right? Um, so again, when we take a look at the pound USD, we're getting a bullish reading overall. That's a score of plus five on the edge finders algorithm. Seasonally, trend projections, economic figures, uh, inflation statistics, by the way, with with uh, inflation kind of coming in line today, it doesn't change too much of the narrative, I think, for the pound USD, and I still would stay bullish overall. So um, that that's my opinion about the pound. Uh, again, this is kind of a daily chart setup, but we've rounded off the bottom. We've broken back momentum. What was down seems to be trending up, right? Off the daily chart, it looks pretty healthy here. Inflation story seems to be intact. And again, remember when I said inflation is overall, in my opinion, the most driving force in the markets right now, as we transition into the next fundamental battleground, you know what the fundamental back battleground for 2022 and uh, yeah, for most of 2022 was, it was which central banks are going to rate hike, how much, how fast, how soon rate hikes, right? Everybody was talking about how high are they going to go? When are they going to start? When are they going to stop? Now, well, 2023 was how, when are they going to stop, right? When are they going to stop rate uh, rate hikes? Now, as we enter 2024, the new battleground in my view, at least right now, until something changes, inflation is coming down. The question now becomes if you're a currency trader, it's which central bank uh, is going to cut first? When are they going to do it, et cetera? It's not, now all about the rate cuts. To help me with this, we're going to probably bring in Ivan. He's a great uh, source to, to talk a little bit about rate cut race, which I think is the, the theme as we go into 2024. Now, if you're somebody who trades gold, S&P, NASDAQ, like myself, we're going to fixate very heavily on the Fed specifically. But if you're a currency trader, you got to also be looking at the ECB, the Bank of Canada, the Bank of Japan. You got to look around the room and ask yourself, where is that rate hike race? I'm sorry, rate cut race going to who's going to lead who's going to fall behind right that is the narrative that is the fundamentals i think that are so key as we talk about currency pairs 
specifically going into 2024. So guys, we are going to be taking a quick break. We'll come right back. It's going to be a 30 second little uh, uh, break to thank our sponsors. These shows are uh, not free to put on where there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes and we do rely on sponsors. And so a big shout out to 8cap, who is our sponsor. They're going to show you in just a second how you can get a free copy of our software, the Edge Finder, and access to our VIP group, all totally free when you create an account with them. Check this out. And then we'll be back with Ivan. The holiday season. Many people think it's the most wonderful time of the year. While everyone's out and about grabbing gifts for loved ones, don't forget to get something for the most important person on your list. You. Yes, get something nice for yourself. Get yourself the gift of a premier trading software and community by signing up with 8cap. 8cap is in the giving spirit because they're handing out the A1 Edge Finder 100% for free. In order to join in on the holiday fun, just create a trading account with 8cap. And if you stuff your account full of funds like a stocking over the fireplace, you'll get access to the Edge Finder and our trading discord. So don't forget to give yourself a gift this holiday season and sign up with 8cap using the link being dropped in the chat now or in the description down below. Don't get put on the naughty list. Trade with 8cap. All right. And special thank you to our friends at ACAP for supporting our show here. Uh, joining me now, we've got the man, the myth, the legend. He was here yesterday. He's back for uh, Vengeance. We've got Ivan Dawn. Hey, Ivan, how's it going, man? It's going all right. It's going all right. So we had the CPI number and mm -hmm. a little bit of an interesting price action response. We saw prices move all over the place across the board. Mostly numbers coming out as expected. What do you think about mm -hmm. this? Does it change anything? What do you think? What doesn't, or, or what, what does it confirm? It is not. It confirms that we are lower. Inflation is lower. Is it? It's according to expectation. Though we have a lot of volatility in the, in the inflation, it is not higher. Secondly, or thirdly, it, the probabilities of a rate cut in March is, I would argue, 50-50. At this mm. point, mm. we're going to see if that's going to change anything. Uh, of course, it's going to change a lot tomorrow, but um, I think we're still standing down. With ah, still standing tall, uh, city quo. Um, I like it. I shouldn't shouldn't have been like two two point something. It would be great. Sure. But uh, the reason for the price action is because it was already priced in. Yeah. So what it, are the market doing right. now? It's pricing in tomorrow. Right, you're seeing a little bit of volatility both directions, perhaps just because markets were kind of, kind of already expecting something mm -hmm. at 3.1 percent overall. Uh, but you make a good point. Where what you've got pulled up here, Ivan, explain this a little bit for people who are not familiar with the uh, the Fed tool here. Uh, the Fed tool is, or the Fed Watch tool by CM Group is basically uh, they, they have re-engineered the 10-year and two, the two-year Treasury bond yield. And they're seeing what, at what level are market pricing and future interest rates at which meeting we have in front. So we have one tomorrow, uh, which I believe is going to be like 98% or so, yeah, 98.4 mm -hmm. tomorrow. And then the next meeting in January, we are still pricing in the current, this right here, this right here, uh, with a 94% likeliness. And then March becomes the next question because... The market has now gone into the naughty corner. Which corner is that? That corner there. <laughs> of we have to cut in March. Then we're going to see a lot of dollar bullishness if that is not by any means met. And uh, I think by December next year, um, we have we are most likely to have around four percent, which is one, two, three, four, five rate cuts by the end of the year. Very interesting. Yeah, and of course. Uh, the the meaning or the importance here too, Ivan, that you're pointing out is that, you know, we're looking out to to March and May and all these different times. You guys have to remember that whether you're a day trader or a swing trader, it doesn't matter. Markets are forward looking. They're moving based on what is expected in the future. 
And again, what started to drag this dollar down is the shift in expectations about when rates are going to come down. Now, of course, as Ivan pointed out, had we gotten a 2.9%, probabilities for a March rate cut would have gone up. And rate cuts, again, that's the candy that the markets is looking forward to in terms of dollar bearishness, but more specifically, uh, kind of a, a, a weight off the shoulders of equities, commodities, gold, et cetera, right? So really, really interesting point there. Ivan, of all the movement today, is there any chart that you're watching close? Um, what, am, what am I watching close? Carry trades. Okay. Carry trades, carry trades. At least in my mind, because if we are not cutting interest in America, mm -hmm. is that going to be the most valuable thing to do? Not really. So that should be a shift in dollar COT. That should be a shift in dollar positions, um, if that's going to be the case. So which is going to be the strongest one going forward? The question yep. that me and Stefano had this earlier today was, the one that's going to hold the, law, the interest at the highest for longest. And who's that going to be? Pound. So maybe looking to buy pound. Mm -hmm. Maybe looking to buy New Zealand. Maybe Australian. Very Those good point the there. I'm I was going to ask again, Ivan, this is you're the perfect person for this conversation today because I, I kind of made that that uh, big segue, the big, uh, you know, book cover here before you came on was, mm -hmm. you know, now it's the race for rate cuts. I think that's the next conversation in markets is Ivan, you and I, we've been we've been uh, following these markets together and covering them together. We talked all the way through the rate hike race when we were talking about, you know, who's going to rate hike and. You know, at that time, it was, um, you know, the UK was like the laggard of the group to rate high compared to others. Now, the question is, as you just kind of alluded to, is the Bank of England going to be the laggard in rate cuts? And, um, you know, that's that's a distinct possibility. We talked about this yesterday when we spoke about the ECB, the, the euro area uh, experience. Mm -hmm already some some serious recession germany they're they're kind of their top dog right has already seen serious economic slowdown and so i don't necessarily think the euro looks re resoundingly strong but perhaps you made a good point about the pound so do you have any is is the pound kind of your your pick of the litter or uh what about the australian dollar what do you think i think what is important going forward is going to be the CPI, but mm -hmm. what we what we need to establish and what we have established is dollar. Where is dollar going to go? That's going to take the cake. Whatever whatever we do, because if you go uh, back in time and you say go daily on a euro, euro has been increasing interest rates in this period, but your dollar went down because dollar also did. So mm -hmm. that's the base case. Now, you don't dollar, don't, when dollars falling, who's going to be the strongest? And how do I distinguish between them is, yes, I do read the Central Bank Monetary, Monetary Pulse Report. I listen to the speeches, and I look at CPI, I look at uh, employment and GDP, and then a bit of risk sentiment somewhere in there and some, some seasonality, and I'm probably going to buy all three of them. But... Yeah, no, no, good stuff, Ivan. And I think, you know, I definitely look forward to as we enter into 2024, having your commentary on this space. I think that that is really, really important. And for those of you guys who are listening, um, what we're talking about here is at the end of the day, the biggest market movers in the in the currency world specifically are the central banks. And as, as we discussed, somebody pointed out in the audience, inflation is still real bad in the UK. These are the things to look out for, right? Because if you see inflation is still stubbornly high in a certain area uh, and the central bank's commentary is incredibly hawkish still, or perhaps just not nearly as um, you know dovish as other places. Now, again, that brings me to another really important topic. Tomorrow, Ivan, we have... Uh, the the fed um, statement we have their decision on interest rates they're very unlikely to change their rates however the question will be is there going to be any dovish sounding tone i think the as you pointed out i remember yesterday you, you made this distinction the fed has not necessarily come out and been dovish they've just been less hawkish i guess the next question would be 
If you are somebody in the camp of we need to see a March rate cut, if that's kind of your expectations, then tomorrow you probably want to start hearing the Fed sound dovish because they're not just going to they, they very much they, they are like kind of, uh, you know, if they're not sounding dovish by tomorrow, I think rate cut expectations from March could really get hurt. What do you think about that? And would you agree? Like, is that what you're if you're a March rate cut person thinking that the dollar is just going to crumble from now until then, you need the you need the Fed to sound really dovish tomorrow, right? Not only dovish, they need to be done increasing interest. Uh, yes. I do apologize for that page. That was a page I was wanting. Um, inflation, at least for October, at least on H H Finder, um, mm -hmm. pound was the highest one. So that's what I want to say. Now, for Fed tomorrow, they need to say that the policy has been restrictive. We have seen development. And we are seeing that inflation pressure is reducing somewhere in that direction. Yeah. So that that they have been restrictive, they, they have been given the uh, as they have seen the appropriate response in the market or in the economy. Aha, rate cut or something at least minimally that. Because right now I looked at the uh, Fed statement from last time, they're still seeing that. Uh, what would I say? Like they 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 they, they are restrictive. And they're still seeing the possibility of, you know, adjusting, which is not the language you want to see tomorrow. That that's you said something, Ivan, there, and I want to I want to extrapolate extrapolate on it. You said something about specifically, not necessarily talking about rate cuts, but you pointed out you need to hear the Fed kind of solidly say we are done with interest rate hikes. That is probably. The next step. So I kind of I kind of jumped to the idea you need to sound they need to sound dovish, they need to talk about rate cuts, but they're probably not going to jump to that. But the the halfway point that that markets would probably love to see for dollar bears and for stock market and gold bulls, they would love to hear the Fed say solidly, we're done with the rate hikes. We're we're if that happens, that's a huge win for dollar bears. Is is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah. And then you have January. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you have March. So there is another meeting. Secondly, or thirdly, or fifthly, or whatever. There's not going to be any policy change tomorrow. It's not going to be like, oh, we're gonna we're, we're gonna stop whatever we're doing. Right. No, that's right. not going to happen. It's just going to be a yeah. slight change. And then January comes around, and there we have we are cutting right. Uh, we are well. That then what they have to say like uh, interests are appropriate. Uh, we have seen enough. Enough disturbance in the market. Okay, uh, exact words. Um, they they are seeing that their policy restrict is restrictive. Um, that they see the economy is slowing down, and therefore they need to end whatever they are doing. Yeah, and that's what you see need to see in January. So what you're looking for is January. Yep. That dovish. Uh, that if that doesn't come in January, then we are. <laughs> Yeah, because then your your hopes for a March rate cut are very very uh, wishful thinking. But I also wanted to draw your attention to to the crowd's uh, attention to uh, the ten year yield as well. Here, guys, we talk about this chart very frequently. It's important because it shows uh, the the bond market uh, trading in their expectations. Uh, Ivan pointed out the Fed tool. The Fed tool is is largely based off of. The yields out there, and what we see is yields overall today kind of flat on the day, but have been trending lower. And this shows kind of on the 10-year side their expectations, but uh, markets love to look at specifically the two-year yield as this one is pretty closely resemblant of um, Fed monetary policy outlook. And so we see this thing in a downward trend. I guess tomorrow uh, we just want to see something um, – Again, any sort of step in the right direction would be would be great for for yields to roll over. But there is an also possibility that the Fed is not going to they, they might talk down some of the risk on sentiment that's been happening. Um, we've had this conversation before. The Fed uh, uses language to to help to moderate what they want to get done. They, they have they use language to accomplish an objective. Um, and that's not even trying to get your tinfoil hat on. That's just straight up being smart. If you were the Fed and you, you know, you're trying to get inflation under control, you don't want the markets to rally too hard because that could reverse your efforts. However, if you are kind of sufficiently happy and you almost are more worried about the growth slowdown stuff, then you might be perfectly fine to let yields keep falling and for um, 
for the stock market to look look hot and give them a little bit of hope because that might help to stimulate and keep things going. So it's it's such a Game of Thrones, really. It's like Game of Thrones and real world stuff when it comes to uh, Fed monetary policy and, of course, monetary policy around the world. Ivan, do you have any trades open right now or charts that look uh, interesting to you today? Euro yen looks beautiful. It looks like it's reversing higher. And I know ECB is coming tomorrow and it's going to be bearish. Mm. And I, I like, I, uh, I, I don't need to, do need to sit on my hands. I don't know. Like, it's, it's itchy. Uh, I like this kind of setup. I just need a higher, I can for some of it buy it now, but I just need a higher, I just need a bit of more continuation. So sure. it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be huge because it's a lot of pips here. But, um, uh, but that, but then euro dollar is like falling. Pound dollar made a new high, kept coming down. I mean, just went up to resistance. So as my dollar bearish thing happening, not really yet. So um, I could just I could just wait until tomorrow to be honest. But um, other than that, somebody wants a Christmas tree reveal. Do you have a Christmas tree behind you? I do not have a Christmas tree. I guess this is uh this is the just bush. The, the bush that I've got there. It's uh. It's not real because if it was real, I probably would have forgotten to water it by now and it'd be a dead tree behind me. So it's it's fake. So it's not a Christmas tree, but uh, I should get one. But don't Julie or don't Julie or uh, Emily like have like uh, some kind of I don't know. They can take a take a trip and buy some what do you call those those lights, those white lights or just Christmas lights. We and could do something. She usually a lot of my office is set up by. Um, Julie, she's got the eye for it. I, I do not, but uh, I could use a little bit more Christmas really? decorations. We usually do stuff throughout the year, like theme. We did like Halloween and stuff, but we kind of dropped the ball on on decorating the room for Christmas. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so I'm so like dirt. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was going to ask you too about gold here because gold uh, seems to have lost its momentum. Right, gold has really. Uh, been a question for a lot of people in the audience. I know gold is is probably one of the most traded things here. Do you have any thoughts on gold? Uh, and if so, um, what are they? <laughs> uh, just <laughs> reading comments. Uh, my also the thing is is um, how far can it go? For for me, this is bearish. For me, this is going down. For me, this is against what I. Not necessarily what I believe. I do believe dollar bearishness, uh, and I do believe this is uh, an exhaustion. So to me, it's you know, it's 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 nice to have vacation, not being like I need to trade today. I need to trade today. So um, at least I'm glad about one thing. I was not a, I was able to not buy one you bought, uh, but um, I'm just waiting you for the bullet. You dodged the bullet there. Us. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> We got it. Uh, but um, now, to be honest with you, um, this is kind of expected. It's just a bit of a waiting game, as always. Um, and I, I hope that we might get back down to 1950, just, mm. as a, just as a nice little level. It's 1984 now. So if this creates some dollar bullishness today, I, I, I can't complain about you know getting markets into my, into my setup area. But um, it's at least a day or two before we can look into that. So here's another question for you, Ivan. If if the Fed is kind of threading the needle to a soft landing, yeah. is that bearish for gold? If a soft <laughs> landing happens, it's kind of a hard one because a hard landing is pretty obvious. That's going to be super bullish for gold because people are going to be like, oh, recession fears, uh, get out of the dollar. You know, um, the Fed's going to print money like crazy. Uh, but what about a soft landing? I I've kind of been in the thought process that can gold can just do just fine in a soft landing. Like the dollar kind of comes down and that gives gold some upside. But we talk about this frequently. What really gets gold explosive to really break highs is fear. And soft landing that doesn't really encompass fear. That encompasses, you know, financial stability, right? Yeah. I'm actually just looking at the chart. Um, so 16th of June, mm -hmm. 2021. That's where they ended the ultra loose monetary policy, and we have, yeah, we have gone higher. So maybe overall it will go a bit lower than maybe. Because even in my head, I like I need to really think about that. 
Because it's it's a dollar dollar weakness, but also gold is like, why do we need to put our money into gold? It's not really a very crazy world out there. It's not we're going to we're not going to crash and die. So maybe lower. Well, and another point to add to that concept, Ivan, is think about this. Before all this craziness in 2020, gold severely underperformed the stock market for years and years and years. Like gold did not do that much for a long time. If you're somebody, a lot of our our friends who have been in markets for a while may remember, you know, uh, I was not in markets. So let me excuse myself from this conversation. But the point is 2011, um, you know, all the way until 2020. If you had bought the highs, it did absolutely nothing. Stock markets recovered way quicker than their 2008 pops, lows came back a lot sooner than that. That's t- that's what, 12 years before we even saw, I'm sorry, no, um, nine years since we saw a return back to the highs. So my point is, I guess, if we enter into a period of economic stability, it doesn't necessarily mean gold just goes straight down forever. It just means it probably kind of underperforms, in my opinion. Whereas if you see from 2020 uh, until now, gold has actually held up with the stock market. If not, I think there were large periods of outperformance for gold. So it's almost like two different situations in which you had a higher VIX, you had a higher you know, fear gauge in the world for a, quite some time here in the last few years that was really bullish for gold. The question I think is, if there is a, a conducted soft landing by uh, the Fed, is there a possibility that gold returns back to that kind of underperforming asset, that boring, you know, uh, but again, if you don't get a soft landing, if you're somebody who thinks, well, the Fed's going to need to rate cut because they have to, because things start to get desperate, uh, which is not the, that's not the consensus. But if it does happen, that's where gold, I think, would explode to, you know, 2300, 2400 an ounce. Because if you look at gold and pre-COVID, which is 2019, 2017, 2018, um, it kind of just ranged between 1,050 and 1,300, yep. like much lower levels than we are now. Yes. And it didn't go much where. And I think that's that's maybe the more, more compar- compared um, um, market that we are going into. Um, but I think, so just short term, I think dollar is going to weaken, gold is going to go higher mm. um, once we have that cut, rate yeah. cut starting. But after some time, after rate cut, then um, gold shouldn't be the one that, because then it will get more money out of Aussie, out of New Zealand, out of Canada, out of, out of all the other currencies, mm-hmm. or all the other assets. Uh, commodities should go higher again. So. Yeah. That's a good point too. Gold should, gold it's a, it's an interesting, uh, I guess, uh, exercise to think through. But I would I would kind of uh, agree that perhaps you get a short term burst on you know dollar weakness if we truly are done with the rate hikes and um, you know the Fed starts cutting. Yeah, I, th- I think you probably see gold rally, but I don't think it's going to be the screaming rally. The screaming rally again. You look at it the last five years or whatever, all of them were surrounded by scary moments. 2020, obviously, Mm -hmm. COVID pandemic. Uh, 2022, Russia invades Ukraine. 2023, banks go under in the US and financial crisis concerns raise suddenly. All of those were what got us to the highs. Now what's kind of been trying to get us to the highs is are rate cuts coming? And, And if so, if the Fed is truly done, does that give you know room for for the gold market to go higher? And I think while yes, it could be kind of this maybe a you know a, a nice move higher. I don't think it's going to be this move that you know would require like a recession fear. Like oh, we are really going mm. into a recession now. That's what would cause yeah. the money printer to go on and gold to go up. Yeah, that, I would I would agree to that. And um, just to in, in universal um. What about the Greek crisis? Yes, there's not going to be at any given point in history, there's never going to be, oh, we are dollar bearish. There's always going to be a risk free. It's always going to be some kind of story, some kind of country, something is in trouble. There's always something for gold to go higher. Also, there's always a story. But generally speaking, um, you have a lot unwinded in that time frame. That's what that's going to make dollar go higher, gold go higher, dollar go lower, and then. After that, they're going to do something else. In fact, Ivan, to to go along with that, I pulled up a chart while you were saying that because that's a great point. So you mentioned the bond market. 
bond market in terms of, of big money has been very, very bearish on the bond market. Um, this is the this is the ten year bond. Uh, it's been incredibly short for quite some time, and now that we're starting to see yields come down and bonds become a little bit more interesting, uh, you can't. To your point, if there's a reversal of this, if this moves higher up the chain, and perhaps that dollar, as you mentioned, has to kind of unwind the other way, these are big, big money flow moves that have to happen. This is why when I point out on this chart, this is a long term kind of positioning of institutional money. This can be much more telling because this is kind of the latest moves that they've been making. So, um, you know, when you're looking at bond yields or uh, I'm sorry, bonds or, or, you know, the dollar or certain currencies, it's very interesting to keep an eye on what this changes week to week. Uh, and so, yeah, I think that's just a good point. The, the unwind of, you know, a dollar bearish, you know, people who are bullish and need to unwind get bearish, if that does happen on a big scale, that could be a strongly sustained move for several several months. So it's yeah. it's a good point to to point out when they're when you're looking at big money positioning. And also, if dollar now makes a new higher high, for that matter, I saw that in chat earlier. It doesn't it, it doesn't make a calorie. Um, it doesn't make me a calorie uh, worried. Not must have been a calorie being worried about it. If it makes a new higher going going above one hundred seven. I know that the future is is lower, down to 100 or below 100. Um, and even if it is 107, it's just a get out uh, kind of thing. And hmm. even though so where where things goes against you, don't just be like, oh, it goes against me. Like, hold on to your position. As well, hold on to your stance or position. Hold on to your view. Like, you have done serious research. This isn't done done on, on a wimp, like, ah, let's see, dollar should do this. No, it's serious research. It's a ser also, this isn't just uh, Sunday school. So even if it makes a new higher high today, even if it makes a new higher high tomorrow. Just with this, we have, um, you know, currency trading. We have commodity trading. We have indices to talk about. There, there's no shortage of topics, and it's always useful to have somebody who is, you know, specialized on the fundamental side to help me go through this. Ivan, um, let me just remind everybody, if you guys do not already follow Ivan on YouTube, he's got his YouTube channel linked in the chat here. He's also doing a lot of good work inside of our group. Day One Trading Community uh, has Ivan doing coaching webinars throughout the week. He also does offer one-on-one -on -one coaching if that's something that you're interested in. If you're somebody who is looking for that extra help and you're just like, I don't know how to trade and I need some help with it. Ivan is your guy. He's he's wonderful for that. He's very good one on one, um, and uh, definitely encourage you checking him out. If you're in the Discord, by the way, you can always shoot a DM to Ivan and ask him about his coaching. Uh, again, his his prices are incredibly fair, and uh, he does a great job working with people. So, Ivan, thank you very much for coming on the show here today and sharing your views. And uh, we will see you back on the next one, sir. Thank you for coming on. Thank you much. Thank you very much right. for having me. See you guys. Uh, and okay, so I, I also want to say people are saying in the chat, guys, is there a, is there lag on the stream? Or is that um, the stream is lagging a bit? Okay, weird. Audio going in and out. Okay, well, either ways, guys, we're ending the show. Let me just say, uh, if you are not already using the Edge Finder and you would like a copy, or you'd like to join our VIP Discord that we mentioned here moments ago, if you'd like access to any of that, we're doing Christmas discounts. If you shoot us a direct message right now, so click this link here that's being dropped in the chat if you want access, if you want information about uh, the VIP group or the Edge Finder, you can get a copy by clicking this link that's being dropped. And with that said, guys, it's also linked in the description as well. All right. Thanks, guys, very much for tuning in. Hope you have a great rest of your trading day, and we'll see you back next time. Oh, 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 oh. Thanks again for watching today's show. Our goal at Day One Trading is to continue to share free value to our audience through our daily videos and articles, keeping you up to date with the latest market coverage. If you enjoy our content, make sure to subscribe for more. And yes, I'm Santa and I work for A1 Trading. Don't ask any questions. Now get lost because I have some presents to deliver. I'll see you all at Christmas. <laughs>